Good morning, everyone, and welcome to ICF Nairobi Online again. Wow, I really miss gathering with you all and uh, pray that we can meet together soon. So, a couple announcements for you. We have set up a few different ways for us to remain connected during this time. Our website's available at, at icf-nairobi.com. If you'd like to get signed up for the email newsletters we send out on a weekly basis, click on Contact Us and fill out the questionnaire. Thanks to Daniel, we have a Facebook page, International Christian Fellowship Nairobi. You can get the links for our YouTube channel for Pastor Peter's Wednesday Inspiration, Friday Bible Investigation, and our Sunday service. Also, since we can't physically collect your tithes and offerings, you can continue to give via electronic wire transfer or our dedicated account with M-Pesa. Select the Send Money option. The number is 0795-715-115. It comes up under Lower Blake. This is solely ICF's M-Pesa account.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are a good and loving God. We bring to you, or before you this morning, the persecuted church. Lord, we ask that you would be with those around the world who are suffering explicit and brutal persecution at the hands of governments or groups. We pray for them, for courage, for faith, and for hope in the midst of brutal oppression. We pray that you would use their experience to open the eyes of those around them to the love and goodness of you, and that they may see you um, through the persecuted church. We also want to pray, Lord, for those who experience persecution in more subtle ways, for those who live in free countries but who experience persecution in the workplace or in the public square where their faith is mocked or derided. We pray for boldness. We pray for encouragement. We pray for a strong testimony and witness, for graciousness in the midst of that persecution, even though it's not explicit. So, Lord, we pray for those persecuted around the, around the world, whether it's explicit and brutal, violent oppression, or whether it's more subtle. We also want to pray, Lord, for those who are hurting or struggling in our church community. We pray especially for the Heath family as they continue to mourn the loss of David. We pray also for the Gilmer family as they mourn the loss of John's father, We pray for both families and for those around them that you would bring peace and comfort and encouragement during this very difficult time. We also bring before you all those who are struggling uh, economically, financially, as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. Especially we pray for those in our own congregation whose livelihoods have been taken away or have been altered as a result of the mitigation efforts. Lord, we pray that you would bring encouragement to them that we would also see ways that we can practically support and encourage each other during this time. And Lord, we pray for all those around the world who are directly affected by the COVID-19 crisis. We pray for the doctors and nurses who are on the front lines. We pray for protection for them um, as they seek to care for um, and serve those who are affected. We pray for researchers and and scientists as they seek to find a, a cure or a vaccine for Um, COVID so that life can return to normal or at least something like normal. We also pray for politicians and leaders as they make decisions about how to lead and govern um, in a time of uncertainty. We pray for wisdom and insight as they do. Lord, we pray for all of us um, as we experience this unprecedented time that you would use this time in our lives to help us see more clearly, to help us see you more clearly, and to help us understand your calling on our lives so that this experience may not be wasted, um, but that it may be used by you in our lives for your glory. Now, Lord, we pray for Pastor Peter as he brings this message, that you would give him wisdom and insight, that you would use him to speak to us, and that we would be prepared for the message that he's about to present. Lord, we pray that you would use his words to speak your truth to us through your word. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The passage today that the sermon will be based on is Matthew 5, 10. It reads, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It was some time ago I led a team to India for summer mission. We were in a countryside in a small town and serving the church. The only church was there in that town. We're having a revival meetings, and I spoke God's word, and people respond, and, and they were coming to ask to pray for them, and I was praying for them. And all that was taking place, we hear the sound of people coming around the church, and someone told me that this village people, they were mad at Christians who were having a revival meeting in their town, and they actually want to throw a stone on us. It was very much of a dangerous and crisis. 
everybody got everybody got so scared and afraid and shocked. And you know, our team began just praying for the incident and asking God to protect. And and here I was as a team leader. I was praying at the same time, but those congregation was coming to me asking to pray for them. So I was praying. For them, while back on my mind, what would happen if they throw a stone on us? I felt like as if the stone was coming through from the window and breaking everything down and hurting people. And as I continued to pray for them, while I closed my eyes, I just have a great temptation just to open and see what's happening. But I can do that. I kept on praying. But it was interesting, even in that crisis. The church people, congregation, they were encouraging all our team members and say, "Don't worry, God will protect. God is with us. Keep on praising God." And we weren't even sure who were in mission for them. Coming from there, we called the police, and the police escorted us by bus for us to come out of that town safely. But there was something that we have experienced. Persecution because of Jesus. Today, our last beatitude, the Bible tells us, "Bless are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is kingdom of heaven." I want to share three things with you. First, who are those who are persecuted because of righteousness? Secondly, what is the blessing for those who are persecuted because of righteousness? Third. How can we be those who are persecuted for righteousness? First of all, who are those who are persecuted because of righteousness? Now, if this is for Christians in North Korea or the believers in Middle East, it's very understandable. But for us, to living in where we are, we feel like the persecution is far away from us. In fact, we don't even like the word persecution. We try to avoid at all times. We want happiness. We want peace. We feel very uncomfortable and uneasy by just listening the word persecution, because in our own lives it seems like there is no persecution whatsoever. But here in the Bible, it seems like almost inviting for the persecution. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. And the word persecution is not just the light pain or simple hardness. It's very strong word with a severe and strong torture, pain and loss and wound and death. And the word is used in present tense, so it's talking about ongoing persecution. It's not like a one-time happen and everything is so clear, but rather it's a continuing in persecution. That's why some other translation translate this: those who have been persecuted continually. And it's quite interesting, you know. All the other beatitude is only one verse, but this, the last one, the Jesus actually emphasized by bringing one more time. And here we see in verse eleven, it says, "Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kind of evil against you because of me." In eighth beatitude, Jesus used two times, emphasizing, "Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you." And it's not just a simple persecution, but also persecuted for righteousness. It's talking about the righteousness of God. It's talking about Jesus, and that's why in verse ten, because of righteousness, and verse eleven, the Bible says the all kind of evil against you because of me. Jesus says, so the righteousness is about the righteousness of God and talking about Jesus. It's a persecution that we have when we follow Jesus, when we are being obedient to God, when we imitate Jesus, when we live according to His will and His values, and that we call persecution. 
If we do things wrong and that comes to upon ourselves in hard time, we don't call that persecution. It's not a persecution because of Jesus. It's because of me. We call that punishment or the consequence. It's a natural response against what we did and the wrongdoings. The Bible also talks about that in 1 Peter 2.19. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. Verse 20. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? In other words, if you do something wrong and you get your suffering, that's not a persecution whatsoever. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15 says, If you suffer, it should not be as murderer or thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. It's quite interesting. The Bible actually adds the word meddler because that is often we get some sort of persecution because of me being meddler. So here what Bible is talking about in the righteousness is not the persecution because of me, not because of my meddling, not because of my wrongdoings, not because of my greediness, not because of my foolishness, but because of Jesus and his righteousness. And that's what Bible is talking about in that. And then we ask question then, why? Why such a persecution? on us because of Jesus. It's because what we believe in Christ is far different than the values of this world. The principles are way different. We are in the light and they are in the darkness. Things that we think is smart and, and the wise, it's a foolish to them. For them to be wise, it's a foolish to us. We are very different from the world because just even looking at the beatitude, think about it, being pure in spirit, being poor in spirit, and being meek and mourning, and all that is way different than what the world is talking about. The world prays pride. The Bible talks about humility. The world endures sin if we can get away with it. But the Bible talks about holiness. The values is different from the world value. The principles and is different from what the world is talking about. And that's why John 15, Jesus said in verse 18, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hates me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And 2 Timothy chapter 3 says, In fact, anyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Do you have this persecution in our lives? Because of Jesus, we have lost something. Because of Jesus, we have ridiculed and mistreated and ignored for his righteousness. And that's what Bible is talking about, the persecuted because of righteousness. How do we know that the persecution that we have is because of Jesus or because of me? How about this? If we can change ourselves better, would that be different? If we make ourselves more humble, would be different? If we make ourselves wiser and work harder and be more sensitive and be kinder, the things will be different? If it's different, then maybe it's because of us. But if in the all that, if nothing changes, then the persecution is because of our belief in Christ and because of Jesus. The Bible tells us that anyone who lives in godly life will be persecuted and blessed are those who are persecuted in Christ Jesus. The second question that we want to ask, then what is the blessing for those who are persecuted for righteousness? The Bible tells us, for there is the kingdom of heaven. 
We heard this before. In the first beatitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But do not stop there. And Bible talks about being mourning about your own self and are being meek and having a hunger and thirst for righteousness and being merciful and being pure in heart and becoming a peacemaker. And then... That those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And verse 12, the Jesus actually expand and explain furthermore by saying in 12, Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. That is right. The kingdom of heaven and be rejoice, rejoice and be glad. Because that's the reward and God is blessing us. In verse 18 of Romans chapter 8, the Bible tells us that I consider that my present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Cannot even compare with the glory that we are having in heaven. And that is praise and that is blessing from God. Are you in persecution? Are you in persecution because of Jesus and his righteousness? We are being treated, mistreated, and, and dealt unfairly. We have a loss and suffering because of Christ. Then rejoice and be glad. God knows and God is with us and God blesses us. And for his kingdom is ours. Just like disciples in Acts chapter 5, when they were in prison and going through the persecution, the Bible tells us they were rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering for his name. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 with a bunch of list of people who are coming out continually in the suffering. They are being lost their lives and they are stoned. They are thrown to the uh, den of lions and fire and all that. But there is always word in faith, in faith. And the Bible tells us without faith, you cannot please God. And that is what Bible is talking about. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Then finally, we ask a last question. How can we be those who are persecuted for righteousness? I have a very two simple questions for you. One, do I live a holy life? Do I live a holy life? The holy means being different. The holy means is set aside and we are different from the world. Are we living a life that is worthy of God? And we have different life in our obedience to God, in our imitation of God. We become his disciple, the man and woman of God who is after the philosophy and the values and principles of Jesus. Do we have holy life? Second question that we want to ask ourselves, do they know that I'm a Christian? Do people know that I'm a Christian? Somehow, the way we do and we live, do they know I'm a Christian? You know, we don't have compromise and or conforming the pattern of this world, and people know that we stand out, and they know that we are the followers of Christ. I remember a long, long time ago when I first went to seminary and became a youth pastor, I had a chance to preach in a college ministry. And there's uh, 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 like 30, 40 students that were gathering together. It was like beginning stage of my preaching ministry. I was excited to preach. I picked the Bible verse from Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, one of my favorite verses. In view of God's mercy, my brothers, I urge you that offer yourself and your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is your spiritual worship to God. Do not conform the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. I was preaching like a fire. 
And while I was preaching, I saw one of the lady, one of the lady was sitting in front. She was crying. She was like, you know, just her tears was dropping off and she was cleaning up. And while I was listening, she was listening to my sermon. I thought she was being really blessed by God. And I thought, wow, my preaching is working. Now God is using my speaking for his message. And I was excited. I was more up and fired up. After the meeting, I was waited, and then this girl was coming toward me, and I thought she would come to me and say, Pastor, it was a great message. I was really blessed, and so on and so forth. I was expecting that, so I was smiling and waiting for her, and she came close to me, and she said, Pastor, why did you preach like that? And I was like, excuse me? And she was like so bitter, and she said, why you preach like that, that we have to live a life like that? I saw the struggle that she had, life that she won from this world, and the life that Jesus is talking about from the scripture. What happened to me was I was really shocked because no one approached me in that way. I thought I was preaching God's word and ministering God's message to people. But this lady came with a very uh, offended mind and she was complaining and I was hurt. I was like really down a few days and, you know, I... I thought I would become a pastor and everybody would want to hear the God's word, but that wasn't the case at all. And why would I want to really hurt and disturb and offend people? And I was really down. And one of my friend, pastor, saw me doing that. And then he said, you know, Peter, when Stephen preached, he was stoned. When Paul preached, he was imprisoned. And then suddenly it came into my mind. That's right. The gospel, because it's a life for those who are in death, it's offensive. It's a life. And that's the power of God's word. And that's what we believe in Christ Jesus. The verse 11 and 12 says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kind of evil against you because of me. Rejoice. And be glad that the great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. May God bless you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, this is hard preaching. Because... Persecution in many ways is very uncomfortable to all of us. But nonetheless, O oh God, we pray that there is a blessing to be persecuted because of you. And as we live a life that is worthy of you, as we live a holy life as a Christian, as the community of God's kingdom in this world, O oh God, there is a persecution. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we can continually dwell in you and work with you. And may you continually be our blessing and you be our God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that for kingdom of heaven is ours to claim, for there is a great reward in heaven. And the pain and suffering that we go through here cannot even compare with what is upcoming in the future in heaven. So, Lord Jesus, we take hope and joy in you. For there is a power, there is a victory. There is the tremendous, amazing blessing that you have in store for us. We thank you, Lord. May we live a life that is worthy of you and enjoy living with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that born with blood wholeheartedly, my soul undeserving. God, your. So good. 
God is so good. God is so good to us. And with God, we give everything to the Lord, for He is our God and He is good to us. Let's pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and fellowship and empowerment of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.